What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Matt here again from The Maths Hero and today we are going to be solving equations. Now if you were lucky enough to catch our last video, you will know that algebra involves variables or unknown values that it's our job to work out. We want to work out the value of these variables. So today we are going to be working out some very simple algebraic equations that involve addition and subtraction. Our next video, we're going to look at multiplication and division. But for addition and subtraction, stay tuned. Okay, so if we have an algebraic equation with a variable hidden amongst it somewhere, our main job, our strategy is to isolate that unknown value, get that variable on its own. So basically we want the unknown value on one side of the equal sign and everything else on the other side of the equal sign. And then when we solve it, we'll know just what the unknown value is. Okay, but how? How do we do that? How do we rearrange our algebraic equation so that we put the unknown value on its own? Well, we know that algebra uses the same four operations as arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we are gonna use these operations to rearrange our algebraic equation. But stop, there is one very important thing we must always remember and understand. And that is that when we are looking at an equation, it is like a balance scale. Now we understand the balancing scale. If there are two even weights, on either side, the scales are in balance. Okay, so everything on one side of the balance scales has to weigh exactly the same as on the other side of the balancing scales for it to be balanced. If we were to add something to just one side, the scales would become imbalanced. And that is the, exactly the same in equations. We need to make sure that we are keeping everything on one side of the equal sign exactly the same as everything on the other side of the equal side. Now that's very important, I'm going to say it again. Everything on one side of the equal sign has to have the same value as whatever is on the other side of the equal sign because that's what the equal sign means. It means equal to the same value. Now that does not mean that our equation has to look the same on either side of the equal sign because we know that two oranges might actually weigh the same as three apples. Even though they look different, they still weigh the same. Well, that's the same as equations. We might have five add five equals 10. We have different looking things either side of the equal sign, but they hold the same value. Five add five is 10, and the 10 on its own is 10. And it's that word again, value. Five add five has the same value as 10. So this equation is in balance. But why is that important? Well, it's really important to understand that we need to keep both sides of the equation the same, because if we're trying to rearrange them, if we didn't keep that in mind, it would be very easy to add something to one side and forget to add it to the other side, therefore making our equation imbalanced and getting something wrong. So it's very important to understand that if we're gonna manipulate or change the equation, we need to do whatever we're gonna to do to both sides. So I am gonna say that again, it is so important. The key is if we are going to change something in an equation, we have to change the same thing on both sides. If we are gonna add five to one side of the equation, we must add five to the other side for it to remain in balance. And that's the same with subtraction. If we wanna subtract something from one side of the equation, we need to make sure we subtract from one side and the other side. Because if not, our equation is gonna become imbalanced and we will get the wrong answer. Now that is the same for multiplication and division, but we're not quite there yet, so we're gonna put that on pause. Okay, so like I said, today we are just gonna be focusing on addition and subtraction. And here is our first example. We are gonna be looking at x plus 10 equals 18. So let's remember our key strategy. Our strategy is we need to get the x all by itself in this equation. But how? How are we gonna do that when at the moment we have a 10 being added to our x? Is there a way we can get rid of this 10? Yes, we could subtract 10, but I can't just subtract 10 on this side, I will have to subtract 10 on the other side. And if we look at it now, 
if we subtract 10 from our first side to connect it to x, we are left with x on its own. It gives us x, add 10, subtract 10, leaves us with just x. But don't forget, we've now got to answer the other side too. We now have 18, subtract 10, which is 8. Therefore, x equals 8. So, x equals 8 is just a cleaner looking equation to our original question. But if you think about it, we've kind of had three lines of answer here. We had the first original question, then we had our extended version where we added in the two negative tens, then we had our final row. Now we're going to start to think a lot about rows as we develop our understanding of equations because the rows are going to help us understand exactly what we are doing at each phase. Now don't just stop there. If you get an answer, you can check this answer by substituting it into our unknown value. So instead of it saying x add 10 equals 18, we think that x has the value of 8, so therefore 8 add 10 equals 18. We know we've done it correct. Check your work. You've just taken this time to do it. Make sure you got it right. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's have a look at 50 equals 35 plus x. Okay. Now in this example, x is on the right hand side of the equal sign. Does that make it harder? Does that make it any different? Absolutely not. We are going to use exactly the same strategy of just getting our x, our unknown value, on its own. Now in this case, we are having x being added to 35, unlike our first example where 10 was added to x. But thanks to the commutative law, that's exactly the same as saying x add 35. If you're unsure about what the commutative law is, check out our addition and multiplication videos on the channel. Okay, so now it says 50 equals x plus 35. Okay, so in order to isolate the x and get an x on its own, we are going to need to subtract 35 from the second half of our equation. But if we subtract 35 from this side, don't forget you must subtract 35 from the other side. So our new line says 50 subtract 35 equals x add 35 subtract 35. Now the easy part, we can just go along and solve our equation. We have 50 subtract 35, which leaves us with 15. So therefore the left hand side is 15. And on this side we have x plus 35 subtract 35, which therefore just leaves x. So therefore we have 15 equals x, which is exactly the same as saying x. 15. So that's about as hard as addition gets. If something is being added to the unknown, we can undo it by subtracting it. And let's just pause there a second because I want to just make this really clear. If we have an equation, our main goal is to solve it. And in order to solve it, we can do whatever we want. We can add, subtract, multiply and divide anything we want to it in order to help us solve it. Okay, so that's really important to understand because some people get a bit confused why are we suddenly subtracting a random 25? Well, we're doing that in order to simplify the look of our equation and therefore help us solve it, okay? So, what about when something is being subtracted from our x? For example, x subtract 10 equals 25. So in this case, the x is not alone because the 10 is being subtracted from it. If we want to get rid of that 10, guess what we need to do? That's right, we need to add a 10. So our new line reads x subtract 10, add 10 equals 25. Ah, good, don't forget, make sure whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So, so if we've included this add 10 to the first side, we need to add it to the second side too. So it reads equals 25 add 10. Therefore, our x is now on its own because plus 10 minus 10 leaves us with nothing. So x equals 25 add 10, which is 35. X equals 35. Easy. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's have a look at 5 equals X minus 22. So in order to get rid of that negative 22, we need to add a 22. And don't forget, we need to do that to both sides. So what does our new line read? Our line reads 5 add 22 equals X subtract 22 add 22. Therefore, when we start to solve it, we can see that 5 added to 22 is 27. 27 equals x and the negative 22 and the add 22 cancel each other out. Therefore, 27 
equals x or x equals 27. Great, we are getting, we are getting good at this. Okay, now we are getting really good. You now know how to solve really basic equations like these, where something is either being added to the unknown or where something is being subtracted from the unknown. Okay, but stop, we have got a small issue. Remember that cheeky little word I told you about, commutative? Well, addition is commutative, but subtraction is not. So what happens, instead of something being subtracted from the x, what happens if x is subtracted from a value? Now we've got a little complication. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. If we had 10 subtract x equals 5. Now, if we look at this carefully, the subtraction, the minus sign, is actually connected to the x because that's what's being taken away from the 10, which therefore means the 10 is a positive. Now we still want to get the x on its own, so we can get rid of that 10 by subtracting a 10 from both sides. That's fine, that's going to get rid of the 10, but it's still going to leave us with the minus sign. That's fine, we can have a minus x, but that's going to get very confusing if we don't know how to use negative numbers. So there is a better way. Let's check it out. So here's our next step for understanding how to solve equations. It is not just values that we can add, subtract, multiply and divide onto both sides. We can also do that to the variables, the unknown values. So instead of subtracting the 10, we can look at the x. We have a negative x. How do we get rid of a negative x? We add an x. So we're going to add an x to this side, which is going to put an x on our other side, which then we can isolate in a moment. Remember when we spoke about rows in solving our equations? This is now adding another row, okay? We've got another phase to this problem. So let's go ahead and do that then. Let's add an x to this side and add an x to our other side. And remember, we can do that because we can do whatever we want. We can add anything and subtract anything from either side as long as we do it to both sides. That's our really important lesson today, okay? So we can add anything, including variables, and subtract anything including variables okay so let's go ahead and put that in now so now we read 10 minus x add x equals 5 add x okay so now our next row our x's are cancelled out and we have 10 equals 5 add x now you might be thinking why have we just done that that's added another phase well the reason is is because we now have an equation that we know how to solve this looks very familiar doesn't it we can do this using our original and key strategy of isolating the x. So at the minute, the x is being added to a 5. So in order to get rid of that 5, we are going to need to subtract a 5 from that side. If we're going to subtract a 5 from that side, we are going to need to subtract a 5 from the other side too. And don't forget that it doesn't matter which way around we put our, our addition because addition is commutative. So 5 add x is the same as saying x add 5. So let's rearrange it so it looks a bit easier. 10 equals x plus 5. Now we want to get rid of that plus 5. How are we going to do that? That's right, subtract 5. So we're going to subtract 5 from this side. We need to subtract 5 from this side too. So 10 subtract 5 equals x add 5 subtract 5. The two 5s on this side cancel each other out. Therefore, 5 equals x or x equals 5. Solved. We are amazing. This problem just took us one extra step to solve this equation, but that's okay. Bigger equations are gonna have even more steps. So it's really important to start understanding why we put the rows. Okay, so let's recap. We now know the basics to solving equations that involve addition and subtraction. The key feature, the key strategy is to get the unknown value on its own. And we can do that by manipulating the equation, by adding or subtracting to cancel out any value that might be in there. But remember, the important rule, anything you do to one side, you must do to the other. You must do both sides. Now don't forget, it's really important to practice, so have a little Google, get some questions up there, and have a practice of solving addition and subtraction basic equations, okay? Check out our next video for multiplying and dividing basic fractions. I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope you've learned something. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it. But for now, I'm a gone.